probably a good way to get into implants is to read a couple of textbooks first and see if you like the data that's in there before you start committing several thousand pounds to courses. Oh, hello again, everybody. It's uh, Pav Kera. Uh, yeah, as you can probably tell, I'm really enjoying doing these podcasts and I appreciate the feedback that you guys are giving me as well. Uh, it's helping me plan for more podcasts in the future. I'm, I'm getting a, a handle on what's useful for you, what's not useful for you. And it seems you guys really liked from the feedback that i've got it seems like you guys really liked uh riaz and Farhan uh, with their uh, with their input over the last couple of podcasts so this is going to be a slightly shorter podcast and i would like to continue a little bit from what Farhan and i were talking about last time so we were talking about the commitment levels that are needed to get into implant dentistry and to progress your career um and then as I was viewing it again afterwards, I realized that there wasn't a lot of recommendations I had put in there. So this podcast is it's going to be shorter, but it's going to be a little bit focused on uh, how to actually take the steps necessary so that you can start your implant career and progress your implant career. So this will have a little bit of uh, of everything in it. And uh, yeah, let's. I've, I've made some notes. If I'm looking in this direction, I'm looking at my notes. Let's get started. So one of the things... As you know, I, b- I believe is important, and for I believe is important as well, is that absolute commitment to what we're doing and to have the appropriate mentoring as well. Now, you can get a lot of information from textbooks. The issue with textbooks, quite often, by the time they're published, they can be a little bit dated. In order to stay on top of the, the data, we really need to be reading and critically appraising uh, peer-reviewed uh, journals uh, on a regular basis. Um, that can be quite heavy to start with, so I'm actually going to make some textbook recommendations. Um, so for beginners, I think what is a really good textbook is Implant Therapy by Nevins and Wang. Um, a lot of people historically have said uh, Karl Misch's textbook is the go-to. Uh, historically, I would have agreed with that, and when I was doing my implant training, certainly that that was one of the one of the better gold standards just to get an overview the issue is is now starting to become quite dated and a lot of the concepts in there are uh, are, are not applicable anymore that they've been disproven and uh, the book implant therapy by nevins and wang is 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 a lot more up to date so if you're a beginner that's probably a very very good place to start but probably a good way to get into implants is to read a couple of textbooks first and see if you like the data that's in there before you start committing several thousand pounds to courses once you've done that you're going to need to do a basic implant course. Uh, A lot of these basic implant courses, they are one day per month over a 12 month period. Um, And that will just kind of like give you the basic entry into into placing implants. Now, in addition to to those courses, which are normally several thousand pounds, uh, you will also need to invest in motor, surgical equipment, um, implants, and mentoring as well so for that initial budget you need to be probably looking about 15 to twenty thousand pounds so that you can start placing implants uh outside the aesthetic zone in the healed ridges uh and and just to start to get your fingers wet basically so and the reason why i say out of the aesthetic zone is placing implants in the aesthetic zone is tough it's, it's, it's really difficult because everything has to go almost perfectly to get a really good aesthetic outcome. And the issue that you have is if there's any compromise, patients tend to moan a lot because it's it, it's right right in their smile. So aesthetic zone implants are, you know, are really, really reserved for, 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 for experienced surgeons. Okay. So if you're quite comfortable placing those and you want to take it to take the next step, what, what are the next things that we can look at for you? Well, once you actually start placing implants, a really good, uh, uh, again, another really good textbook I would recommend is um, Zero Bone Loss Concepts by Thomas Linkovicius. Uh, he's done a lot of, uh, of, of, of studies uh, recently on different aspects with regards to surgical and prosthetics uh, relating to implants. Uh, dentistry and he has shown very very stable bone result uh, bone levels over a long time frame 
Now, there are a couple of things in there I do disagree with him, but overall, I think it's it's actually a very, very good textbook. And the one of the reasons why it's a good textbook is the, the, the studies that he have done are, are pretty decent. And there are, are a few nuances which are often overlooked, which he covers very, very nicely in that textbook. So that is my next recommendation, okay? The next recommendation after that, I get the feeling I'm going to say a recommendation a lot in this podcast. The next one after that is Immediate Dento Alveolar Restoration by De Rossa. Um, it's seeing De Rossa's work is, is just, it's exquisite. It is absolutely immaculate. So he's been doing immediate dental alveolar restoration for about 15 years. Uh, he and his team have got thousands of cases uh, documented, and it is a method of uh, placing immediate implants, even if you have no no, no buckle plate, no buckle bone, uh, if you have dehiscences, if you have fenestrations, if you have infections. Um, he has developed a way of uh, getting autogenous bone from the tuberosity and rebuilding the site. And I have used this technique a fair bit. It's a beautiful technique. It really does work well. Okay. So the next one beyond that is Implant Therapy by Murley. This is quite an extensive textbook, but I think once you get your head around the basics, this will really start to hone your, your diagnostics and your treatment planning a little bit more, which is the one after that. Then we start to move on to, and remember, we're talking kind of like intermediate level now. Uh, then we start to move on to Dennis Tarnow, the single tooth implant. I probably should have put this immediate slash borderline advanced level place uh, uh, implant placer um, but I think it, it fits quite nicely here because it will be like an introduction with regards to the aspects that you need for single implants in the aesthetic zone and the importance of every step being just about perfect so that is that is definitely definitely one to to look for the next book, uh, which goes into quite a lot with regards to uh, sinus lifting, uh, is Mike Picos's Bone Augmentation in Implant Dentistry. Uh, the reason why I've put this here is, again, once you're comfortable placing uh, implants uh, in, in healed ridges, the next thing that's probably going to start limiting you is, is the sinus. So this will help you start to get your head around uh, uh, the, the sinus lifting and other, uh, other grafting techniques. Which is the next one after that? What have I got? Uh, Yes, um, dental implant complications by Froome. I think this is self-explanatory because if you're an intermediate laser and you are starting to place quite a lot of implants, you are now probably starting to experience um, some failures and some complications. You need to know how to deal with it. What I like about this textbook is it's, it's quite extensive and it goes into common and uncommon uh, complications which may arise. And the best way to deal with complications is to know what causes them in the first place and uh, and avoid creating them. Um, on a very, very simplistic level, it comes down to immaculate treatment planning and immaculate execution, and you can avoid a significant number of issues that way. So when you see people doing implants at speed, when you see people saying, oh, I use stock abutments, I use this, I use this, uh, or when people reuse screws that they get from the lab, it's not the right thing to do. You're, in, you're inviting trouble. You're inviting trouble. So you're much, much better off uh, understanding the precision level required. Okay, what's the next one after that? Soft uh, Tissues and Pink Aesthetics in Implant Dentistry by, I'm, I'm going to try and pronounce these names, Cardara Lopi and Cassentini. This is a, is it actually, actually, you know what, this is a really nice textbook. Purely from a point of view, now, <laughs> well, there's a couple of things I've realized. I've got two idiosyncrasies. Constantly saying purely and simply because and things along those lines. So I'm trying not to say those two phrases. I nearly said it. Nearly said it. Okay. So <laughs> going back to what I was saying. So this textbook is really good because it goes into a nice amount of detail, but it explains it on a very simple level as well. It's not one of those where you need to be, you, you need to have a master's degree in, in, in perio to understand what they're talking about. Um, this is re it's, a, it's a really nice textbook and it, it's just, 
it, it's, it's very easy to get your head around. So those are kind of like my, uh, my, my, my intermediate uh, recommendations. There are, of course, so many more, you know, I could just keep going on and on and on. But you know, I'm trying to also be realistic. And I'm just trying to give you guys uh, kind of like the, the what, what I think are, are, are really nice textbooks. By the way, if any of you have got some really good textbook recommendations that you recommend for me, I would, I, you know, I'd love to, I'd love to hear it. No, I'm, I'm always open to, 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 to learning more. Okay. So moving on to more advanced procedures now, I would say, uh, the Zaga book by Carlos Aparicio. Uh, I think even if you're not going to be placing zygomatic implants, I think you need to understand zygomatic implants from a point of view that you know when to refer out. Now, the reason why I put this quite high on my list is you probably guessed I have uh, been studying a lot regarding zygos at the moment, and um, I'm about to start my my clinical mentoring, and so I've been studying extensively hard um, for, for, with, with regards to this. That's, that's why it's first on my advanced list. So the next book I would recommend at advanced level is The Osteoperiosteal Flap by Ole Jensen. Now, one of the reasons why I like this is he goes into a lot of stuff that you're just never going to do because the, the type of sometimes the type of grafting that he does is so far beyond what, what we're going to do. However, when you get your head around his concepts, particularly the way that he keeps the periosteum attached – to bone when he moves it in order to maintain a blood supply it's very very clever and it gets you thinking about the biology so that is a very very good textbook what's next bone augmentation in oral implantology by professor Curie. there are now for those who are about to get into implants what you need to understand is grafting looks easy but it's not easy now, when you go on courses, they make it look easy quite often because the uh, people teaching are experienced or if it's sponsored by a company, they want to sell the products. Um, there are certain basics that you need to understand with regards to grafting. I am going to go over those at a, a, in, at a later date. I'm not going to go into depth on that now. But one thing that I like about uh, Prof. Curie's textbook is he uses autogenous bone but not block grafting. He uses plates and then he uses autogenous scrapings within the plates. And you get significantly better significantly better results when, when you're doing it that way and he is one of the few clinicians who can graft anything you know he's, he's got cases going back 15 20 years where he's done you know two centimeter vertical graft and combined horizontal graft and you know looking at these results it's, it's just it's just incredible um is i wouldn't say it's the easiest technique but it is it is absolutely spectacular and that is a very very good book to get your head around because if you're talking about autogenous grafting i think that technique is 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 absolutely superb on the flip side of the coin um you have vertical and horizontal ridge augmentation by professor urban now prof urban uses a, a, a mixture of autogenous bone and i believe it's it might be xeno or or, or allograft, and he mixes it 50-50, but it basically it's not 100% autogenous. And again, Prof Urban is also another person who seems to be able to graft everything. And what you need to understand with regards to grafting, it very much comes down to the surgeon. You know, a good surgeon will be able to graft anything using just about any technique. So, But you need to understand the basics and then learn and hone your skills from there. The reason why I put that is it's because it's a book which isn't purely about autogenous, so it's a different viewpoint from uh, from, from from Prof. Curie's uh, from Prof. Curie's textbook. So, if you were if you were placing single implants and you're ready to start um, start doing sinus lifts, this this is a big bugbear that I have when people start implants. They don't realise the extent that they're going to have to spend in and, and commit to and they'll get themselves into trouble. So once you've been uh, uh, 
once you've been mentored and you, you're comfortable with singles, you're ready to start doing um, sinus lifts, you're going to have to go on a sinus lift course. Sinus lift course might cost you £3,000. You're then going to have to buy a sinus lift kit, which is going to cost you a couple of grand. You're then going to have to be mentored for 20, 30, 40 cases uh, in order to really become proficient with them and understand that if something were to go wrong, how do you deal with it? And the other issue that you're going to have is your indemnity is going to go up as well. Your insurance is going to go up. So you either do it or you don't do it. There is no harm in sticking to the simple implants and getting somebody else to do the, the, the more complex work. But if you want to get into it, you need to understand it's a big commitment. But it's a fantastic commitment because once you start to, you know, once you get proficient at them, you know, your confidence builds. And the same is true for grafting. Okay, you're going to do a grafting course, you're going to learn the basics, and then you're going to have to find a mentor to help you and teach you how to graft and get predictable results. And that goes true for any aspects that we're talking about. Now, I've mentioned several times that I am going to get trained to do zygomatic implants. Now, I have done a lot of studying. I've put in a lot of time, a lot of effort, a lot of money already. And now I've got to, now I've got to be mentored for it. There, there's no cutting corners. It just does not work. You know, is if I want to become proficient at something, I need to learn and have to put in the commitment in terms of cost of buying equipment, going on courses and having mentoring as well. And that applies to myself just as much as what it does anybody else. So I just wanted to 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 go over this and hopefully give a little bit of insight to to, to those listening with regards to, you know, you know, what's the next step? What should I be reading? How should, how can I how can I progress my career? How can I start with implants? As I've mentioned, you know, if you've not started with implants yet and you're keen, start by reading the implant therapy textbook by Nevins and Wang. Then if you're interested, then find a course where you get on well with the course, the, the course tutors. You know, you're going to get support. You're going to get uh, access to, 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 to mentoring. Um, you know, if it's, if the course is sponsored by, xyz implant company which normally they are be aware that they are going to push their implant systems because that's the whole reason why they are that they are sponsoring it that doesn't necessarily mean it's a bad thing it just means that you've got to understand what you're getting yourself into so um i think that's all that i wanted to do today um and the reason why i wanted to keep this short is because on wednesday i am sitting down and I am chatting to Bill Schaefer himself. Um, for those of you who know Bill, you know that he is, first and foremost, he's a gentleman. Secondly, he is extremely experienced with all matters relating to implants. Bill is also the type of guy who will always... Um, be open and honest and show his failures a lot of people don't show their failures he will show his failures so that other people can learn and bill will he'll never i've never known him to belittle anybody um you know he's always like you know we all have bad days it happens um you know if, if i was to do it i i may have done this differently this is why i say he's an absolute gentleman so i'm really looking forward to, to speaking to bill now what we will be discussing is implant connection types um, Bill will be discussing uh, Morse taper because uh, Bill uses a lot of ankylos. He's used Bicon before in the past. And I will be discussing external hex. Um, I think external hex gets a very bad rep uh, because... Um, people don't know how to use it properly. It's, it has massive benefits, really has huge benefits. And I'll be discussing that in, in, in detail. Um, and basically, Bill and I will be, will be arguing flip sides of the same coin. Um, you know, it's, hopefully you'll get some information with regards to the benefits of uh, Morse Taper, the downside to Morse Taper, and then uh, same with External Hex as well. 
Um, so I'm, I'm, I'm really looking forward to that. So that's one of the reasons I kept this podcast a little bit shorter, uh, because I'm chatting with Bill. Um, I have had requests with regards to other things you guys would like me to, to chat about. And that's absolutely fine. You know, keep these questions and, 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 and requests firing in. Um, I do have a number of other people lined up as well to, uh, to appear on the podcast. Um, I have, uh, Kevin Rose, who's, uh, who runs courses on community communication uh i've got uh <laughs> stavros himself uh so, and you know you guys who've 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 seen stavros grafting this there's, there's nothing this man can't graft so i'm hoping to pick his brains and learn from him as well so you guys have been fantastic thank you so much i really appreciate the support um please 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 invite your friends to listen to my listen to my sultry voice <laughs> please invite your friends to listen to my podcast uh, share where you can as well it would mean the world to me and I will speak to you guys later bye